This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org. And that was Angelique Cajot, who came to Copenhagen for the UN Climate Summit. I'm Amy Goodman with Anjali Comet, as we continue with the voices inside and out, outside of the Bella Center, where this convention summit is taking place of well over 15,000 people, in fact, including the journalists, it's over 20,000, Anjali. Well, the U.N. summit here in Copenhagen saw one of its first protests Tuesday, when members of the Pan-African Climate Justice Alliance marched inside the conference center, citing the scientific evidence that the planet's average temperature could rise by more than two degrees Celsius. The protesters chanted, two degrees is suicide. Actually, it is one of the disappointments, and um, we have uh, been following very keenly, and we have realized that, uh, particularly, the Danish prime minister is determined to deliver uh, a politically binding deal, which, of course, you know, there is no deal there. It is just uh, something, de a decoration of, uh, of, of a failure. So we, 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 we are determined to ensure that if they don't deliver a fair deal, and that is a legally binding deal, under the pillars of what we have been negotiating. Then we want to urge the, the African group, the G77, and uh, even the heads of states and the ministers will be coming that it is dangerous. They should not sign a genocide paper for us. The developed countries that do not want to sign reasonable uh, 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 commitments on the, under these negotiations. So we are not saying we want to work out. We will not want our negotiators to work out. But please don't force them to do so, because Africa is too hot for us, and we don't want people to continue to take advantage of us. Augustine Yamshi from Cameroon, voices from inside the Bella Center. Well, we go now to the chief climate negotiators from both Bolivia and Paraguay. Bolivia has been one of the countries leading the call for just climate reparations here at the COP15 talks. President Evo Morales, who was just re-elected in a landslide victory, has been outspoken on the issue of climate debt. He told Mother Jones magazine last November, quote, if there are countries that are doing a lot of damage to the environment, those countries should make some acknowledgement, some reparation for the damages that they are causing. Soon after, he released a sweeping 20-point plan, including a demand that developed countries contribute a minimum of 1 percent of their annual GDP to a United Nations fund for poor countries. We're joined now by Angelica Navarro, the chief climate negotiator for Bolivia, and we're also joined by Miguel Lovera, the chief negotiator for Paraguay. He's played a key role in negotiations over the world's rainforest that many expect will be one of the few deals to be actually finalized at the summit here in Copenhagen. It's called RED, or Reducing Emissions from Deforestation and Degradation, and a final text is expected as early as this weekend. Angelico Navarro and Miguel Lovera, welcome both of you to Democracy Now! Angelica, maybe we can start with you. Um, talk about the Danish text and your reaction. Well, I have to say that everybody was taken a little bit by surprise, but I also want to congratulate the very good work that the press has been doing, because we have learned it from the press, actually. And the reaction has been uh, quite straightforward from uh, the G77, and in two accounts, on process and on the content. And on the pro con uh, process, I have to say that we are quite surprised, because this is not what we were expecting. 192 countries are reunited here to try to come to a deal. And there is this parallel process that basically seems to be untransparent, undemocratic, non-participatory, top-down, that it seems to be imposing itself on what we are trying to achieve with 192 countries. We think that we have to come back to the real track, and that is a track with participation, inclusiveness and democracy. Uh, that is for the process. But in the content, we have serious also concerns on the content. It seems that we are talking about just one agreement, disregarding the two tracks, two mandates and two results that we are trying to achieve here in Copenhagen. I want to remind everybody that G77 and Bolivia, African group and other groups have been calling very strongly to have the Kyoto Protocol survive. That is, that developed countries should 
would come with their second commitment period, ambitious numbers for the reductions of emissions. That is one of the results we want from here. The second result that we want is, of course, an enhanced implementation of the Convention through the LCA process. What the Danish text seems to be do is a merge of the two, which impose new um, obligations to developing countries. So we are the ones that are supposed now to be mitigating. And I'm asking, what will a developing country, rural men or women, indigenous women in Bolivia doesn't even have electricity, will mitigate? And for what? So that developing, developed countries can even have still two, three cars? or just like four times a change of their clothes in a year? What are they asking? Do they want us to finance the problems they are causing? Why should I pay for them? But on top of that, why should we choose between building a school, a bridge, or a hospital and adapt? So that is what we think. And on top of that, we think that the level of ambition that we, what is proposed in the, the, uh, in the Danish leaked text is definitely not enough. It will not solve the problem. It will not solve the climate change. Angelica Navarro, you uh, took the stage by storm, to use a climate metaphor, in June in Bonn, Germany. When you talked about this issue of climate debt, um, explain what you mean by it. I just want to remind that, actually, historical responsibility is already in the Convention. And we were, if I'm not mistaken, five countries that presented uh, in Bonn, in a technical briefing, a historical responsibility quantification of what developed countries have done and what they should do as a result. Um, that was India, Brazil, um, China and Bolivia. The Bolivian proposal, in a specific, is climate debt. What do I mean uh, and what does Bolivia mean by that is basically that developed countries have over-consumed atmospheric, common atmospheric space. Twenty percent of the population have actually emitted more than two-thirds of the emissions, and as a result, they have caused more than 90 percent of the increase in temperatures. As a result, developing countries, we are suffering. Bolivia's glaciers are melting between 40 to 55 percent. We are have extended droughts. We are having in the lowlands more flooding, and we are losing between 4 to 17 percent of our GDP in the worst years. That is climate debt. And what we are asking is repayment. We are not asking for 